This is me entering- Oh, beating five scam arcades with science. By Mark Rober. Everybody remembers the last Mark Rober video I watched. An arcade wearing just your normal everyday backpack. Only technically it's not your normal everyday backpack because when I set it here and then nonchalantly load a few balls into the water bottle, then it plays the game like a good robot should and I win all the tickets. And that's pretty cool, but what if I- Or, or, or. You grab a ball, you walk to the side, and then you just you just throw it in there, right? But some arcades have gotten smart. This is what I used to do when I was a kid, right? You would walk over and you would just throw the ball into the 10,001, like standing right next to it. Some arcades have a cage that goes over it, so you can't do that, or glass. Oh, this one does have glass. I see it. I see it. This one has glass. I just saw that. I just peeped that. Most of them have cages, this one has glass. So this really is, this is actually a high IQ play. But I feel like foosball also isn't the best way to make tickets in an arcade anyway. If I told you I made similar backpacks, not just for ski ball, but for- I watched this entire video on his Snapchat story. You watched a fucking 20 minute video vertically on Snapchat with ads every fucking 10 seconds. Some kid just says, I'm so bored. He's been following me for 29 minutes. Then leave the stream, buddy. You're not forced to be here, pal. Little news flash. This game and this one basically coming up with contraptions to absolutely dominate five of the most common arcade games, including some hacks that cost less than a dollar and actually work to set world record ticket payouts. But we also secretly recorded data from a bunch of different arcades. So I'll teach you the strategies to beat the games that give out the most tickets, along with showing you the five games we discovered. This one's such a scam. That one is such a fucking scam. I'll teach you the strategies to beat the games that give out the most tickets. Along with that one's a fuck, dude. When you go on this one, when you go on this one, have you all ever played this fucking game? When you get to the last one, it does like a frame glitch over your fucking uh your stack. It it doesn't. You literally like can't get it unless you time it like .01 seconds perfectly. I'll show you the five games we discovered are actual scams. And that one. And that one. And that dumbass key one. Because that, that one's the most enticing. You All you have to do is get the key to go in the slot. But here's the big fucking catch. You're never going to get it. Why do you think they have fucking $1,000 prizes? They have like an iPad Pro. Jordans. Like uh, an iPhone. AirPods. Beats. They have all those in that fucking thing. You're never going to get it. Never going to get it. Unfortunate for the 300 bits. Read my messages. I suggested the video of vlog creations on Friday, but I also think this video, I can't see a URL that you're going to type, nor am I going to click it, because that's sketch. Submit it in the Discord if you want me to watch a video. Unfortunate luck, that's how everybody does it. It's a much better video. It's only a small portion of the video. It has a timestamp. I can't I, I can't click on the URL. Even if it if, even if I could, I wouldn't. Submit it in the Discord, okay? Um, the, if you want me to watch a different vlog creations video, then tell me now unfortunate because i promised you i would watch this video and if you don't want me to watch this video i'm not going to watch this fucking video because you're getting one vlog creations video because to be honest i'm probably going to get bored of this video <laughs> just be spaghetti -o launcher like i don't even know what's happening maybe I, I might like it i don't know one riddler for the 300 bits you mean ski ball oh what did i say foosball don't ever step foot in another arcade again until you've watched this video in its entirety Let's I will watch it though. I'll watch a vlog creations video. You gotta tell me which one. But you can't send me a link. It's not gonna work. It started. Vlog creations is boring after Cole left. I don't, I've never even seen them, so I don't know who Cole is. Now, admittedly, the genesis for this video came when I was using my over-engineered bowling ball that I could control just by leaning. Because I thought, what if I took that same concept and applied it to mini golf? And while that idea could be really useful for getting a good golf score, there's just no real payoff for my efforts. Which focused my attention to the holy grail of any mini golf course, the arcade. It was time to recoup all the allowance money I've lost as a kid, starting first with skee ball. And before we really see it in action, let me first explain how it works. You know the biggest scam ever is Chucky fucking cheese, dude. At Dave and Buster's and all those other places, you get you get tickets based off performance. At fucking Chuck E. Cheese, they're the start of arcades falling off. Because it I, I used to go to Chuck E. Cheese all the fucking time. And no matter what score you got, you got the same amount of damn tickets, bro. It was such a fucking scam. 
You go to, I don't know if it's changed now, but when I was a kid and I used to go to Chuck E. Cheese, I could get 100 points or 10,000 points. I'm getting the same fucking 15 tickets out of that goddamn machine. My, key, my cousin won the key machine with his $20 and won a $1,000 phone. Won a $1,000 phone. Javon for the three. I'm saying most, most of them are scams. I don't know which one you went to, but most of them are scams. Because if you take away the backpack, you'll find a Frankenstein version of a softball pitching machine. That because if it wasn't a scam, you would be able to figure it out efficiently and win it every time. It's so random and so unlikely that they have to profit off of the prizes. If, you, if, if that key game where you get like a phone or Jordans or some shit was learnable, it, it, it would be insane that we chopped up and modified so it runs just off batteries. Then there's a solenoid here that makes sure the ski balls get released one at a time. So if you just turn it on, then we put a ball in here, it fires the ball like this. The coolest part here though is when it's placed in the backpack, you roll this pocket up to reveal the ball exit and then place this water bottle here as a clever disguise to Just bring the goddamn machine. Who the fuck's gonna kick you out of the arcade, Mark? No one's gonna kick you out of the fucking arcade for doing this up to three balls at a time. Now, of course, if you don't have a secret robot backpack, here's how you win this game as a mere human. For starters, if you watch the pros play, yes, there are skee-ball pros. They actually... There's skee-ball pros. People that are pros in skee-ball. Asian for the 500 bits asks, why did you go into a useless major? I used to be an exercise science student going for physical therapy. I started doing social media and making money on social media. The two options were either A, I'm going to drop out, or B, I'm going to switch my major to something that I enjoy because exercise science takes too much time and I don't like it. So I switched to philosophy. Uh, it's useless in terms of job application in a lot of degrees. You're right. Uh, but with a philosophy degree, you can go into a lot of jobs. For me personally, it's useless because I'm not going to use it in the job field, but um, it still works in basic conversation and just being overall on social media aim for the 4,000 point hole. And this actually makes sense because even if your throw is a little too weak or a little too strong, you're still getting significant points. A common mistake is to take the bait and go all or nothing by aiming for the small 10,000 point hole in the corner. The pros aim for this oh. only a desperate- Awkward. Awkward. Awkward too strong, you're still getting significant points. A common mistake is to take the bait and go all or nothing by aiming for the small 10,000 point hole in the corner. The pros aim for this only- Yeah, when I would play, I would all I would only go for the 5Ks. In desperate situations where they're behind and they need big points to make a comeback for the win. The other big tip is to brace your leg against the base of the machine in the same spot each time. And then try and only move your arm, which will make your throws more repeatable and accurate because you're reducing the variables that could lead to air. So if you want to win, just follow these tips and practice. It's button. fucking skee ball, man. I'm not, I'm not giving a fuck about that. They bring the least amount of tickets, even with the most amount of points. Or you could just go with my route. So then when you're all done dominating, or if you think one of the workers might be getting suspicious, you can just pick up the backpack at any point and walk away with a bunch of tickets on your card. Up next is one of my personal favorites, basketball. In this case, the backpack is being used just to smuggle the special mechanism. Bro bought his own basketball to the fucking arcade. Them inside. Because of the untrained eye, this is just a normal basketball, when in fact, it's a robot in disguise. Now before I show you exactly how it works, you first- What is it even gonna do? It's just a basketball. Understand how these games work. Just underneath each rim is an infrared laser and a detector. And then on the front of the rim, on the other side of that metal plate, is a reflector. So when the laser beam shines straight forward, it bounces off the reflector, and then the sensor's like, Yep, I can see the beam. So when a ball goes through the hoop, it breaks the beam, and the sensor's like, Aha, I didn't see it for a second. At which point it tells the game to add two points to your total, because that means you must have scored. In engineering, we call this a beam. What? How is he gonna scam this? 
How the fuck is he gonna scam this? Brake detector, and it's the exact same concept you have as a safety feature on your garage door. So if you really want to destroy the high score here, the ball needs to break the beam, then somehow get out of the way so the beam reconnects, and then come back and break the beam again over and over again as fast as possible. But if you think about it, the whole ball doesn't need to actually get out of the way, just the part in front of the beam itself. And how might you do that? Well, one way is to 3D print over and over again as fast as possible. But if you think about it, the whole ball doesn't need to actually get out of the way, just the part in front of the beam itself. And how might you do that? Well, one way is to 3D print the bottom hemisphere of a basketball in two parts attached together through some linear guide rods, then add a battery, microcontroller, and servo motor so the bottom part of the shell can translate up and down. This way it would reconnect the beam and then break it over and over again and register two points every time that happened. Now you just need a way to grab the rim so you can hang out there while you perform these shenanigans. And if you had some pneumatic pistons. Oh, he's going to throw the ball into the net and just get it stuck. And then he's going to have a fucking servo motor. Just go. Why not just get good at the game? <laughs> Why not just get. I feel like I feel like this is not even that efficient. I feel like you could just probably make the amount of baskets in that time to a mini pressure intake controlled by a solenoid valve triggered by an RF remote. And then you could shoot the ball normally and then with one push of a button, piston rods would shoot out and grab the rim. And then once mischief was managed, you trigger the remote again and they would retract. Now if you just add another 3D printed hemisphere on top, then glue on the actual basketball skin. And when you put it all together, it would look something like this. Now if you don't happen to have a robo ball, here's a few tips that will help you get the high score. This kid, I, anybody remember seeing this fucking video, this kid? He, like, blew up in, like, during Vine ages for, like, a minute. How fast he would get this, this shit. Game. Now, the most important thing is you never want to waste time waiting for a ball to roll down to you. And since these games normally come in pairs, just swipe your card on both games and then temporarily borrow the second set of balls. Now, this should give you plenty more than you need, so just keep the balls that are the least inflated. Now, you start the game and get into a rhythm where you finish your shot with one hand and then start grabbing or replacing the ball with your other hand before your first shot has even gone in. Or if the rim is close and you want to get really extreme, you can just go with a two-handed shooting strategy like this guy. But even even that strategy is no match for my spherical transformer because when I'm that's ready to not fast though doesn't that look slow as fuck oh I just shoot the ball with one hand wait dude Sneeko reacted to you yes but not today he reacted to me yesterday or two days ago and then hit the remote right as it's about to go in and now as the ball just sits there articulating, I simply Oh, that is fast. Okay, now that is kind of fast. Sweet, sweet points rack themselves right on up. And then as soon as time's up, I just hit the remote again, and the piston rods are tracked. And while no one's the wiser, I've now injured my way to a- Well, like, doesn't that, like, doesn't that make arcades, like, not fun? Like, I know, like, I know, like, a lot of the, the reason of a, an arcade is the prize, but, like, playing the game is also what's fun, right? Who cares? It's money. Are you actually profiting, though? Like, is he going to go over how much, like, because if he bought, say, $50 of tickets and then used these scams or these, like, machines to get tickets, would he actually profit in prize money? Like, I don't, I don't know if he would. I just feel like the disconnect of, like, how much a prize actually costs them to give you and then how much money you're spending, even if you're cheating, it's not... I don't know if how much, like, how much you would actually make. ...load of tickets and a new lifetime high score. Next up is a really popular game... I fucking hate this game! This game is so fucking stupid! called quick drop where you hit this button to release these ping pong balls at the right moment yeah and and the only way you get any amount of good tickets is if you get all fucking 50 in like 12 seconds you get all 50 ping pong balls into the buckets within the 22 seconds allotted without yeah it's so any fucking dumb any shots then you hit the mega jackpot but the thing is to get all 50 balls in before the time runs out there's a wow this kid's goddamn awful at that wow 22 seconds allotted without missing any shots then you hit the mega jackpot but the thing is to get all 50 this kid just missed every ball balls in before the time runs out there's essentially they literally didn't make one in that clip no margin for human error which is good news for me because robot backpacks 
don't make human errors. Now you notice when I walk up, I can just set the backpack down and it self registers right in place. The trick here is we 3D printed an exact negative replica of the button housing on the game. And this piston rod that pokes through and pushes the button on the game is attached to this solenoid that's controlled by this arm. Yeah, but don't you have to time the rotations correctly? Like, because it, the game starts at, at a different point in the in where the fucking ball is. Arduino microcontroller. Or the, the, the cups are. And it tells it the exact timing needed to beat the game. Now, if you're trying this on your own, here's what you need to know. To successfully do this in 22 seconds, you have to drop four balls in each bucket, except in two buckets, you've got to drop five. Now, dropping five into these two buckets isn't impossible, but the timing's so tight, it's really hard to pull off without them hitting the rim and bouncing out. Now the jackpot starts at 500 tickets, and every time someone loses, it goes up by two tickets, and each time that happens, the game gives you just a little more total time on the clock. And so if you ever see the jackpot at more than 625 tickets, enough time is now on the clock where you only need four balls per bucket to win, and it's definitely worth trying it a few times because that makes it so much easier- Then I'll just use my fucking hands, Mark! Then I'll just use my fucking hands, Mark. If it's only four balls each one when it's past 600, why do I need a fucking servo motor to tell me how to do this? Pull off. Alternatively, if you're too impatient to wait for the jackpot to rise up, you can just go to school for six years to get a degree in mechanical engineering. Oh! He can do it in the five one as well. I thought his fucking machine only worked for the four. I was going to say, well, then just a human could do it anyway. Cacao for the three. Can you please review this link and give your opinion? No. And do it this way. I literally just said I'm not clicking on a link. No. And then even as all 554 sweet, delicious tickets are being added to your account, you can just inconspicuously walk away with your backpack in tow. For our next game, we've got the perennial arcade favorite, Air Hockey. Now this is the most complicated of all the builds because if you look closely here at the top, there's a hole in the bag for a camera to look out through. Then stripping away Bro! the- Bro! Oh my god, it's Air Hockey. Just fuck. You don't even get- Do you even get tickets in Air Hockey chat? It removes the point of playing the game. It removes the point of playing the game. You know, it, it, the point of Air Hockey is person versus person. You don't get tickets. So they're gonna play you when you just have your backpack there? I feel like that could still easily lose. I feel like if you slammed that, that still loses. And then at your own leisure, you can eventually just come back and finish things off. Then with the victory securely in hand, you just disengage the two toggle magnets. I really don't think that one would work in actual game. Cause that guy, that guy was going real slow. If I just fucking whip that shit, your camera's not going fast enough. Twist, and you're good to Stop go. Stop skipping. I didn't want to see how he built that one. Go. And finally, we've got the ultimate test of strength, the punching bag game. Now for this one, to make it more interesting, I wanted to find and challenge the guy in the arcade whose muscles look the least like mine. So I stepped up first and rocked wow. the 678 out of a possible 999. But then he stepped up and rocked an 877. And since that's bigger than 678, the trash talking commenced. Maybe if you spend a little less time at the computer, a little more time in the weight room. He is sweating. This is why I wear tank tops, chat. This man is sweating. Like, actually, holy pit stains. Like, dude, I like I, I would not, dude. I, I get those pit stains when I wear light colored shirts, so I only wear I only wear tank tops or dark colored clothing. <laughs> so that was disappointing, but lucky for me, I had a trick up my sleeve. Like actually, because that's a fake arm. In order to disguise this, that was still a little it's basically a bionic punching arm powered by two spring-loaded pistons. To set the springs, we use a threaded rod and a drill. And once under tension, they're held in place with a quick-release mechanism. I Imagine Mark builds this and still fucking loses. Trigger with my finger at the exact moment I want to punch a thing. Why is he sweating so much? I don't know. It's like genetics or some shit. I sweat all the fucking time. Fish for the sub. The weird for the sub. And I would classify the initial test in the lab as... Oh. Encouraging. Now it's important to note to play by the rules for this game, there's no side punching, pushing, running, kicking, or headbutting. But you'll notice there's no rule against spring-loaded- No headbutting? You're not gonna get a good, a good score headbutting.
just in punching gloves. So now that my moment of sheer domination had arrived, I stepped up and rocked in 838. You still lost. Which was less than 877, which was disappointing. Dang it! And in hindsight, I should have known it's really hard to compete with the human <laughs> Oh, dude, what the fuck? Human body in terms of- Yeah, physical. I was expecting like 999. Punching and throwing, because we're just so efficient with those mechanics. And I have to sacrifice a lot of the speed and momentum of my own arm body system when I'm wearing that heavy wrist mounted puncher. But you know what? I'm a fighter. And what I lack in muscle mass, I make up for in tenacity. So out of curiosity, I took a closer look to see how the machine actually works. And it turns out it has a beam brake sensor just like the basketball game. So as that odd shaped metal piece, which is- Oh, he's just going to jam some dumb shit up there and it's gonna censor fucking 999 to the axle and punching bag rotates around, the beam has this tiny window to hit the sensor. You can see the sensor in the front view here. So the game cleverly measures how many mil- Stop abusing the man, he's a legend. No, I fucking love Mark. It's just like this one, this one, like, it, like you don't need, I dude, like these two don't even get you tickets. Seconds the sensor sees the beam for, and from that it infers how quickly the bag is rotating on the axle, and therefore how hard it was punched. And this gave me an idea. So I went to the prize counter and redeemed a few of my jackpot tickets I'd been stocking up in exchange for a Pez dispenser. Step one was to unwrap and eat some of the Pez, because they're just delicious. And then for step two, I removed the head and cut the arcade card like this, and then taped it. Not Yoda! Here, and then went and tracked down my new friend. My theory was that if I extended the Pez dispenser and modified card out like this and then let go, the force of the spring would retract the card and it would break the beam so fast the machine would think it was an insanely fast punch. But would it actually work? And it turns out, it absolutely does because I maxed out the machine. So, uh, yeah. Use this information responsibly, kids. But you just removed the whole purpose of playing the game. It's, it's just punching. Now, a few years ago, I made a video where I visited the carnival and collected data on all the games and then used physics to expose which carnival games were rigged and then showed how to beat them. So this time around, instead of the carnival, I once again bribed some family friends with unlimited Slurpees in exchange for them collecting a bunch of data at some local arcades. And in addition to uncovering which games- Bro sitting at an arcade with a notebook, writing down how many people win. Scams, which I'll cover in just a minute. The biggest scam, bro, that fucking one. Here's what we discovered. For starters, the most popular games in the arcade were the redemption games, as opposed to the experience games. And here's what I mean by that. Redemption games are the games where the goal is to win tickets. So like the coin pushers or this- Oh, dude, only old people at Dave & Buster's play the fucking coin pusher. The coin pusher is actually more of a scam than the other thing. I would rather lose $30 to the fucking weird arm thing trying to get a, a pair of Air Jordans than lose to the fucking coin pusher. The coin pusher, you don't win anything. Like, even if you get a lot of coins, a coin is like one fucking ticket. You have, you get 200 tickets. Oh boy, you could just get that on the fucking Flappy Bird machine. Plinko game or spin the wheel. On the other end of the spectrum, you have experience games like air hockey, skee ball, or racing games. It's a trade off because the games on this side of the spectrum give out more tickets, but it's not as much about the fun of the experience. And then in the middle of the spectrum, you have games like the ping pong drop or hit the clown that have middle of the road ticket payouts, but they're also middle of the road fun to play. Now, that since game. the games on this side were a lot more popular, they earn a lot more money for the arcade, even when you factor in the higher ticket payouts. We found that for a medium-sized arcade on a busy day, the less popular games were played 25 times, and the more popular ones could be played up to 250 times or more. At an average gameplay of $1, that means each game makes $25 to $250 per day, or about seven to $70,000 per year. And I might need to get into the arcade business. I might need to get into an only coin pusher business. Should I do that? I have an R. I have a Dave and Buster's, but instead of any, there's only coin pusher games. It's literally just the coin pushers, the games that make so much money.
And finally, we found that if your sole goal was to win tickets, coin pusher games like this Avengers one seem to be the best return on investment. But honestly, you can just ask one of the workers there who are hanging out making minimum wage and are probably pretty chill, because chances are they'll just tell you which ones they regularly see pay out the best. All right, so finally, let's get to the- He just said the coin pushers pay the most. How the fuck do the coin pushers pay the most? Whenever I play a coin pusher, that's such cap. I feel like it pays the most if you have a lot of coins that are about to fall. Real juicy part and talk about which games we When I retire from social media, open up an arcade instead of a restaurant. I'm not going to open up a restaurant. I said I was going to open some other shit. Not a fucking restaurant. God damn. Fish for the sub discovered were basically scams. Now, I actually have some experience in this area because a few years back, I built my original backpack pops. And jackpot is your single a jackpot should be won. So this time around, I was curious what other games were essentially running the same scam where you think it's a game of skill, but in reality, the arcade owner is controlling when a jackpot's won. And as it turns out, this really popular game called Stacker employs the same trick. I fucking said it. I fucking said it. It makes you play like 45 fucking times just to win. Fucking shit. I don't even play this game anymore. Like, like I've been, like, dude, the last four times I went to Dave and Buster's, I didn't even touch this game. Because I know it's a fucking scam. This other really popular game, Keymaster, and this Cut the Rope game are also, in fact, running the same scam. In all three cases, I was able to get a hold of a copy of their owner's manual, and each one has some language around how the arcade owner can specify how often a jackpot occurs. I also found many, but not all, claw machines have language around how it will close with full strength, but then back off to a much weaker strength of- Yeah! I hate claw games. I fucking hate claw games. Dude, it's it's like it's it's like it's like they the weakest human ever is just fucking grabbing it. Like just fucking it's metal arms. Yet it, it's like one pound of force to fucking grab the stuffed animal. Just fucking grab it. Whatever is set by the owner. For this reason, it's best to try for prizes closest to the exit hole to minimize the amount of time it's held in the claws. And I call these games scams because they present themselves as winnable games of skill, when in reality, it's essentially a random dice roll that is heavily stacked against you. And just like at the carnival, the most lucrative games are those where people overestimate their chances of winning because they seem to get close, ah! but they don't quite win. In ah! Gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and it will lead to increased play of the slot machine. But this is much worse than a slot machine, because at least in that case, you know it doesn't matter how you pull the lever because it's random chance. And on top of that, those games are regulated, so there is a minimum payout required by law. So for every dollar, for example, put into a slot machine, they have to pay out at least 80 cents back to the players. But for those scam arcade games I just mentioned, the default payout rate is on average 20 cents for every dollar you spend. But a shame. So slot machines are less of a scam than an arcade fucking claw machine. Statistically, you if, if you put the same amount of money into both, you would lose more money in a fucking ar an arcade machine. Shady arcade owner could basically set that to zero and no one would know and that would be perfectly legal And that's especially messed up because it's primarily played by kids So if you remember nothing else, just try and pick games that avoid any sort of digital winning element that can be rigged Because in those cases, you just never really know what your chances are These games, however, are all great options to at least have a better sense of your actual odds of winning I've checked the manual for all of these and what you see is exactly what you get And I can vouch- Well, the fish spin one is just ass some arcades are more fair about this AC than for the sub loot and 9 for the sub. Here refuses to carry any of the games that can be rigged against you, which I think is pretty cool. However, if they happen to see this, my only suggestion is that moving forward, they should probably institute a no backpacks allowed policy. And perhaps also don't let people redeem tickets for Pez dispensers. This is a dad finder. It was made by a Oh, this is not uh, this uh, that was the end of the video. That's something else. All right. Next.